What up Fight World, it's your boy Ego, back with some more boxing. Now I'm back with my latest prediction. This weekend we gear up for Gennady Triple G Golovkin versus Asumano Adama. So Triple G's returning after his victory over Curtis Stevens, which was a good fight to me. Um, power versus power, Gennady Golovkin definitely executed his game plan, wore Curtis Stevens down. So he's returning with Asumano Adama. HBO has elected not to televise this particular fight. Looks like they're having some kind of pissing contest or pouting because of Triple G's selection of opponent, I guess, or some kind of uh, politics. So get your computers ready to stream this fight. It's happening in Monte Carlo, and you won't be able to watch it on HBO. As far as the prediction, it's an easy prediction for me to make. Not hard. Um, there's other fights that have been really challenging for me to to make but this one's pretty easy i have gennady golovkin winning pretty comfortably there may be spots where asamano adama makes him think but overall i just see triple g being too much tell you what i think triple g is an animal and i think his pedigree his amateur experience comes into play a lot of people don't take in consideration his amateur experience. That helps tremendously. I mean, fighting the Lucian Boutes and the Durrells and the amateurs, that is tons of experience. And some people, when you see a guy with the power and the force that Triple G has, you forget that he's actually a solid boxer as well. Is he perfect? No. Is he as fluid as a Rigondeaux? No, in my opinion. But then again, who's to say that he can't be that type of boxer? I just think, for the most part, given the competition and given his freakish power, to a degree, he hasn't had to dig down and use certain things like head movement um, as much as another fighter because he has this this God's gifted power and maybe he has it in his tool case. He just doesn't have to use it. So... I think I think he's a better boxer than people give credit for. Um, just like a Canelo, I think a lot of people look at Canelo like a brawler. I'm not comparing the two either, so make sure you don't leave any dumb comments. I'm not comparing Canelo or Triple G at all. I'm just saying there's certain people who have a rap for being a brawler or, or whatever based on the fact that they have power. Or a lot of people have them pinned as this fighting style. In, in all actuality, they don't necessarily have that. I think Triple G is a good boxer. And if you look at Mike Tyson, another person with this freakish freight train power that nobody seemed to really be able to withstand, a lot of people forget Mike Tyson was actually very athletic. He had a very boxy, short, compact shape, which allowed him to get certain um, leverage and torque on his punches. He had killer speed. And some of the things I've seen Tyson do defensively is unlike a lot of people that I've seen at heavyweight. Just, um, I forgot what fight it was, but there was a fight where Tyson, he was bending at the knees and ducking shots, using his head from side to side in a quick motion, making him really hard to, to target and to punch. And people forget that. They see the, the power and they see the ferocious attitude that Tyson had or he came out like a lion like would run over and try to immediately hurt you and they might think oh he's a brawler he's just a, a power puncher but he was more than that and I think Gennady Golovkin as time um, goes on we'll see that he has more intangibles other than the power it's not just the power another thing that's underrated about Gennady Golovkin I think his chin is underrated he took some big shots from Curtis Stevens and never derived from his game plan so to me, from what it looks like, the dude can take a punch. Um, as far as the Asumano Adama fight, I just, I truthfully, I haven't seen too much of Adama. I have seen him fight before. A lot of my prediction is based on Adama versus Daniel Gill in that fight. And from what I've seen, I just haven't seen anything that stipulates that he's going to beat Triple G. I think to beat Triple G at middleweight, um, it's going to take a special fighter. Maybe like a Sergio Martinez. I don't know. Um, it's going to take someone that does a lot of things right. Unless 
all of a sudden, out of nowhere, um, Triple G is is caught slipping, has a horrible training camp, or is not focused, becomes complacent, or something like that. But other than that, if he comes in looking like he has been against Macklin, against Curtis Stevens, and that kind of attitude, real um, up to par in terms of training, his body weight, not dehydrating, not getting overweight and killing himself to make weight, then I think he's going to be a problem for really anybody at um, at his weight division. And that's because they're going to have to walk through fire. They're going to walk to hell and back to beat him. They're going to have to be able to withstand the early storm. You're going to have to take the fight out of the dog. You're going to have to land body punches, establish a very strong and stiff jab. Um, you're going to have to just outwork in a reasonable, sensible fashion without being um, retarded and getting yourself knocked out early, becoming a highlight reel. So you're going to have to do a lot of things right, I think, to beat Triple G. I think he is beatable. I think a guy like Andre Wart, Andre Ward um, possesses the ability. He's at a higher weight division. He's smart. It's going to take a fighter like that to to beat Triple G at 160. And that's just my opinion. Um, it's doable, but you're going to have to be smart and reasonable because he has that freakish power. You're going to have to use lateral movement. Don't let him cut off the ring, something he's really good at on you and I just don't see Asumanu Adama being the one in the fight with Daniel Gill Adama looked straight he used some pretty good defense I seen him slipping punches and ducking punches so he looked pretty athletic he looks like he was in good shape um I think part of the downfall why I have Gennady Golovkin beating him is even though it looks like he has a level of defense behind uh, his skill set it was still easy to hit him because he looks like the type of fighter who likes the inside fight and likes the exchanges. And against a Gennady Golovkin, that's not good because a Daniel Gill punch, you may be able to recuperate, recover from that. But from a, a Triple G punch, that's a whole different ball game. That's apples and oranges. So he's not going to want to trade shots like he was doing with Daniel Gill in this fight. I also think he was spotty with his jab. I don't think he used it consistently. He used it to um, his advantage in some spots in the Daniel Gill fight, but others he, he kind of derived from it. And again, I just see him getting caught in an exchange. And another thing that's underrated about Triple G is he's accurate. He's pretty accurate. So not only is he a devastating puncher, he's also an accurate puncher. So where Daniel Gill might have missed shots, Triple G may be able to land at least one of those and his are going to come with more brute force. So I really see Adama getting stopped round 5 to 7. He seems pretty defensive-minded and pretty responsible defensively. I just don't think it'll be uh, enough to derail the momentum that Gennady Golovkin has. Things that i seen that Adama did that I liked, again, his defense looked pretty good, and he was going to the body. He would commit to the body in the Daniel Gill fight, which is good against a power puncher. You have to find somehow, some way to lessen or reduce the strength and the power of a person take some steam off their shots so i'm looking forward to a good fight um again i'll give him to round five or seven but i eventually see him getting probably tko'd i don't know if he'll get knocked out cold um but i see him getting at least tko'd in the mid to late rounds because i just don't see enough i don't see him bringing enough another thing i noticed with the dom and the daniel gill fight is some of his punches weren't tight and compact. They look kind of pity pat. They look like slapping punches a bit. If you look at the fight with Luis Colazzo versus Victor Ortiz yesterday, the shot that Colazzo hit Ortiz with that knocked him, like made him buckle and, and sent him to the canvas was a very crisp, tight hook. And he just caught him right on the button. And then the rest was history. Victor Ortiz went down and didn't get back up for whatever reason. So, um, Adama's going to have to really reinvent himself from what I've seen and change his MO, change, change his game plan to beat Gennady Golovkin. And I just, at the moment, don't see him doing that. He had an all-out war and lost a points uh, decision to Daniel Gill, who, to me, is a solid fighter, but he's he's not, he's middle of the road to me. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say, oh, he's the best. You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't put him 
up there with the top middleweights um, of all time or in the last decade. He's just like a middle-of-the-road fighter, not a scrub, not a bum, but just not supreme either. He lost to Darren Barker, who got his head tore off and retired from Sturm. So let me know what you guys think of this prediction. Leave a comment. What round? Uh, how does it end? Does Adama have a chance? Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video's Ego signing off. Mm -hmm.